Okay, great. All right. I'm Barbara Garrity Blake, and it's November 11th, 2009, and I'm talking to Mr. Milton Styron at his home in Davis. So, Mr. Styron, could you start off by telling me how you first got involved in the Menhaden industry? Well, I first, Menhaden in the summertime back in the 30s and early 40s in Coors Iron was one of the was one of the profitable ways of making a living. And uh, my grandfather, my grandfather uh, fished a boat, fished a Lloyd T. Back back in back in the thirties, when when Buddy, my twin brother and I, were just six seven years old, and he he would uh, of course we wanted to go fishing. That's what that's what we wanted to do, and well they took us one day, and we had the we had the best time. But children can't stand but just so much, you know. So the next day. They, they didn't take us, and we woke up, and the sun was a shining, and we sat in the swing and cried because because they had left us. Well, we grew up in it. We we grew up in the men Hayden is one of the most pleasurable jobs that I ever had. Really? That's that with fish. You catch a lot of fish, and and <clears throat> you load a boat. A loaded boat looks. Looks the best to me, and and uh, so I I was born in it. Mm -hmm. I was born in it, and uh, of course we started. Buddy and I started before we were not big enough to to do the the job, you know. But as as time went on, and in the late thirties, uh, we, we did, and. Uh, I don't remember what year it was now we caught those fish, but we, we fished in the summertime, and in the fall of the year, we, we'd go to the Cape, fish around to the Cape, and we fished out of Drum Inlet. Uh, Lambert Morris, the Morris has bought the fish factory, was here to Davis. Is and that where your father fished out of, that factory? Yeah, we, we fished at that factory. Could you describe your father, the boat that he used to fish? Was it one of those old steamers? Uh, the Layla G. Mm -hmm. It was it was the Layla G. It, it it was a boat. It was one of those old sharpies, oh. and that the, the cabin was on the back end of it. It's all open. It was all open in the front. A sailboat? No, it was a sailboat. But when it was converted, made a Ben Hayden boat. The the cabin was on the back end. Oh. It, all all the front of it was was open, and excuse me. We shrimped out. Of, we, we we went out of drum, uh, drum Inlet. That was a Drum Inlet was a very treacherous place. No buoys, nothing. It, you 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 went by sight. When when you were going out the channel, there was no markers or anything, and and you determined the deep water by the t movement by the movement of the water. And on, on the inlet, it was the same way. And, and when you went out of the inlet, there, there was more. The way you could tell where the inlet was on ebb tide is where it was the roughest, because the tide was running out against the surf, and and and, and make make the breakers when when it, when it was rough. And we we fished some out of Drum Inlet mm -hmm. on on the on the Lake G. and uh, in fact. We 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 went out there one evening and caught fish and came in drum inlet at night. Came in came in drum inlet at night, with not a marker or nothing to go by. You're just looking at the beach in in observation, and and there, there was two boats of us, the the Layla G and the Alec. The we the boats we pulled the purse boats with the Layla G. But the Alec was was an extra boat, mm -hmm. and and she was there too. And uh, anyway, uh, they they started using the, uh, a striker boat, pull that little boat behind, and it was it was very helpful because the man in the striker boat rode right out on the water, and he he was where the fish were, and. Uh, 
he, he could he could see and 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 point out how where to sit on the fish, and uh, so that that was uh, that was in the early forties. Mm -hmm. That was in the early forties, and uh, we we uh, when we were fishing out of Drum Inlet in the fall of the year. It had to be pretty before you could get out there. Put the pool loose. Per, now those purse boats were were tiny compared to what they have now, mm -hmm. and they were loaded with net. And the the way we had to do with those purse boats was uh, when we came in, you couldn't pull them. We usually tied the boats right to the, the purse boats right to the stern of the boat. Well, if you did that then, and a swell come, it would take the boats. It would bring the purse boats right up on top of the big boat. So what we'd do is lash them together and drop them back about uh, 50, 75 yards behind us. And that, that would give, uh, that would get him free space to run. And, and, uh, and we never did lose any. I don't know why, but we didn't lose any coming in there. Did you always fish outside the inlet along the beach, or did you also in the fish ocean. in the ocean? In the fall of the year, it was it, that's what we went for in in the ocean. But now there was a certain time during the year when those fish were migrating, those yearling fish that we call them. The big fish always went offshore, the rochad, and uh, but the year the yearling, the the medium sized fish. They they would they would come in the, when they came from north and migrated. Sometimes they'd fill the sign full, and, and that was in the fall after the summer season was already over. I remember one day we were coming from the Cape, and right here off of the harbor, the Davis, we saw some fish, and we made a set out there and caught three hundred and forty six thousand. That that set, well. When we were going out of Drum in it, well, one morning we we were we were going, we were in Starnes Bay, going toward Drum in it, and uh, Daddy Daddy saw the fish, and we went out we went out there and set. I was in the striker boat then. We went out there and, and set on the on that place of fish, and I went and pulled all the corks I could get in the boat. And there were so many fish in that net. See, in the fall of the year, when it's cool, the water's cool, they'll get just as solid as they can be. There were so many fish in that net that when we got them pursed up, the, the purse boats had turned around back to back. And there was fish all the way around in the front. And I don't know now how, how I got on the... I uh, must have turned... It was only about... Eight for the water where we were, but we caught eight hundred and ten thousand. That's it. I believe it was on Tuesday morning, and the way we had to get to get the fish, the fish was there in that net in that shoaly water, and we started we started to the end of the net to the purse boat, and and bailed and would bail a, a load of fish, about a hundred thousand, out, out of that net, and as we put bailed the fish. We we would move right on down, down around the net. I believe it about eight eight uh, boatloads that that we, we we had in them. Of course, that they died. The fish died, and they were on the bottom. But but the depth that they were, we could raise them up enough to that we could bail them. It used a dip net to bail them. Then. Well, how did you do eight boatloads? Were the boats going back and forth to the factory? No, no. The the boats were right in, in Star. We we caught them in Starnes Bay. And that was just this side of the Atlantic, mm -hmm. and it was only about eight feet of water. And we would we would uh, get a boatload and leave the net right there, tie 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 it up, and come and bring them to the factory and put them out and go back and get another one. That that's the way we did it. Oh, you're and, lucky you could do and, that. And it, it was uh, it was four o'clock on Friday morning when we got to the dock with with the last load of fish. That that was that was a set now eight hundred ten thousand. I never did forget that. How about that, Mr. Milton? What could you describe what that factory in Davis was like? What it was like? Mm -hmm. Well, it was right where that uh, launching ramp is, Oyster Creek, right now. And and uh, the uh, well, 
uh, the the elevator was right out to the edge of the water where where, where you where you put the elevator in the hole the boat the boats would come right to the dock and lower the elevator right in it right right, right by the bridge right by, right where that launching ramp is mm -hmm. right now is where it was and of course they had uh, they had the fish factory there and, and they had boilers steam boilers that they used to uh, to run all to run the machinery with and they had a dryer they had a big dryer there. Uh, in in the factory when when they would they would cook the fish, they would cook the fish and and and, and uh, they'd press them, get the oil out of them, and when the, when it came out where the uh, it wasn't chum, but the the fish were cooked, mm -hmm. and then then they would run them through the dryer, and they had a uh, that they, they used the oil to to. Uh, to, for, for the heat, for heat, for they went they went in one end of that dryer, and it had, and that dryer had uh, uh, fins on it that would gradually work the fish through them, mm -hmm. and and they'd come on out on the other end and go in a pile, and and they they they'd move them from there. Was it was it different than Beaufort Fisheries then? Just as, uh, it was a smaller. Mm -hmm. it, it was a it was a smaller thing than both were fishing. Now, I I remember when when uh, Grandpapa Joe fished the Lloyd D, and we'd go down there on the boat when the boat would take the fish, and uh, and then uh, we put the fish out, and you had to go up town to get oil and gas up there around uh, Front Street. Mm -hmm. uh, we had to go up there and get the the oil and, and the gas to run the run run the boat with. Uh -huh. Now, who who owned the factory that was in Davis? Eddie Copen. Okay. Eddie Copen. He he was from uh, other side of Moorhead out there. Can't. Uh, well, what is that right across from Beaufort when you go when you leave to go through Moorhead out there on the northern? Um, Piver's Island, oh, that island there, that Phillips. No, no that 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 place out there. Uh, I don't know where he was from, Camp Glen or or uh, Mill. Oh yeah, Crab uh, Point is yeah, farther yeah, down from yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's that. Huh. That's where he was from. Well, do you remember when that Davis Shore factory closed? Uh, well, he he ran it, and uh, I he and he sold it. He sold it for twenty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars, and you couldn't buy an engine to go in it for that now. Uh, he, he sold it to the Morrises, the Atlantic, oh. Cecil Morris, and and, and uh, uh, Judge what was his name Lambert Lambert Morris Lambert Morris ran it. Okay. And and, uh, and the of course you have good years and you have bad years, and, and I remember back then. That uh, they got fish from anywhere they could. They'd take scrap fish, and 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 cook them in there when they didn't have fat bags. Mm -hmm. So they didn't get any oil, but they got they got the fertilizer. Right. And and, uh, and when you asked me when it closed, uh, I'm not sure, but but Lam Lambert moved that factory. To Taylor's Creek. They, they moved. He moved it to Taylor's Creek really? because they they had access to the big boats in. Uh, in the fall of the year, there, there was very little here. How so, did he move the factory? Well, piece at the time. Move the machinery on a boat. Well, on, on trucks or whatever. In uh -huh. the they, they they moved it. They moved all that stuff there. Wow. In the, and that that was a big factory they had the Beaufort, a lot bigger than than this one here. And I think Will Dudley uh, ran ran the plant to, to Beaufort, to Taylor's Creek. Okay, and which what which one was that? Do you remember? Uh, well, the old one was Beaufort Fisheries, and it seems to me it may have, it may have been Standard Products. Uh huh. That, that, uh, 
and, and I, I, it's probably a bigger operation then yeah. instead of being the Morrises. They they probably were in with the, some of the, the bigger companies, mm -hmm. and and, uh, and they had access, as I said, to those bigger boats in the fall of the year. Right. To, to, to get to get a fish. Well, when the yeah. factory ran here, did any of those um, Davis fellows from Davis Ridge no, fish? No, no, they, they fished. They fished the Smith Harvey Smiths. Okay. They they, they fished the Harvey Smiths. Were they living all living in Beaufort by then? Uh, yeah, I think they they move they move from the ridge, what we call the ridge over here. They they fish, they fish in the core iron, just like uh, just like the rest of us did. Mm -hmm. But that was before my time. Okay. But I remember Harry Willis, Harry Willis, uh, from from Davis. They they had a boat. Uh, uh, what was the name of that boat now? Uh, I can't. I can't remember it. But anyway, Harvey Smith found out about them, and 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 he hired them on down there. Mm -hmm. uh, and Dave, David Davis mm -hmm. was on the Parkins, and when she sank, in uh, I think that was in forty two. Okay. That 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 she sank in the, that that then. Then the the weather came, and you didn't know it about the weather until it got here. Mm -hmm. And but the, there would be certain mornings there'd be heavy swells coming in and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the, the the boat the boat was loaded, the Parkins was loaded, and when they went to hoist the boat, the first boats up, uh, I don't know what happened, but the. Uh, the the net got under the wheel in around the propeller of the of the, of the big boat, so they, they didn't they didn't have any power, and, and and there was a heavy swell. Of course, that swell would come quick, and it it was right right in the last of the fish. I think it was just before Christmas, I believe it was, mm -hmm. in uh, I I uh, in uh, forty seven. Must have been for uh, that uh, we went with Firely Starn back back and Daddy and I did, and I went and seen that fall. Mm -hmm. And George Garner from Beaufort was uh, he was the engineer, but he was on the Parkins when when, when she sank. Oh. He, at that time, the, there was some of them that the, they they got in the purse boats and and started to run in. The, to to cut, try to get in, it was so rough they couldn't get in the bar, and they came by the went by the bar and on down to the eastern. And when that weather came, it was so cold they just about froze to death. Mm -hmm. But uh, they had a bad time. But George Garner was an engineer on the Parkins at at the time. And uh, that that was that was big big thing then. That was a big thing then. What when the Parkins went down? The the what what they were doing so far as the economy and oh, all like that was, was 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 a big thing. Yeah. Then. Well, when the Davis factory was here, were there any other factories down east? Not that I know of. Okay. Not that I know of. So then that got moved to Beaufort sometime, and then eventually James Styron picked up. Fat back and well, I think that he, James Starr moved here in the seventies, okay. and after he was here a while, they rigged up. They they, they rigged up and went to fat back in. Okay, and uh, so it was uh, probably it could have been in the late seventies they got started. Uh, James would know about that, but. Uh, and kept right on until fairly recently, right? Well, let's see. Ruby, what was the last year we fished? We started in 98 and uh, about 2002, I believe. 2002. Well, well James, we J James used his feet for, cra feet, uh, for fish for crab bait. Mm -hmm. And... and uh, uh, he he would freeze it, he would freeze it and and, and sell it like that. That was all together 
different. All the rest of them was for, for fertilizer and oil. And uh, he wasn't interested in oil. It was a, and it, it was a good thing. We made good money at it. Yeah. We made good money at it. Okay, well, getting back to the striker boat, could you describe to me the first time you ever worked as a striker boatman? I, I don't know. I don't remember the first time. But uh, uh, in the, uh, it must have been in the forties that that we caught those fish that I, that big set that I was telling you about. And uh, of course, that was before the war. Mm -hmm. That was before the war, and after the war, we come back. Daddy and myself went with Firely Starn on the Mississippi, and I worked in the first uh, in seventy. It had to be seventy-seven. I worked. I worked in the scene. Pull, pull net in the, in the scene, just like the rest of them did. And Dad, Daddy was, I believe Daddy was pilot then mm -hmm. with, with Firely. And uh, we we had some experiences. We had some experiences that didn't have any radio. Some of them had radios. And and others had uh, uh, little uh, radios that you could hear on, but you couldn't, you couldn't talk on. We didn't even have one. Firely didn't even have one that you could hear listen to and uh, we uh, I was not on I was in saying that that Paul Milton Lewis from from Beaufort was, was striker boat okay. at that time I remember we went up up the western beach we were up there off of what we called Tom Smith's camp that up there off of Emerald, Emerald Isle mm -hmm. and that there was no other boat side but us that morning and and we made a set there, and that was them yearling fish, and and they they would they would get so thick the problem is you catch too many of them, and we we we, we made a set, and and had we we were alongside of the Mississippi, and had the net tied up on the side of it, and then sunk one of the boats, it was the uh, May boat I believe. <laughs> And that that boat has been there. I went shrimping with Milt in the uh, early '90s when he was on the William H. Smith, and they were talking about that the purse boat that had been there all that time. How about that? It, it, it's still there, as far as I know. That that boat is. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Well, when you you said that the striker boatman's job was to to find the fish, to get out onto the fish. Mm -hmm. Were there special signals that the striker boatman used? Well, uh, wave. Mm -hmm. you, you, you would wave. Okay. And, uh, uh, now, Buddy and myself uh, learned semaphore with flag, talking with flag, and we could talk to one another. Really? Yeah, all, all, all the time. We were it's fishing. called semaphore? Semaphore. How do you spell that? S E M A P H O R E, I reckon. Huh? Semaphore. Is that like Morse code? Uh, oh, oh, right, right, huh. right. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And, uh, yeah, we, we talked to one another. It was kind of novelty. <laughs> as, as, as far as I could see him, I could talk to him. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And you'd be out there on the dry boat doing that? No, no. Uh, in the dry boat, because the dry boat would, 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 would run out would dry, uh, Flew out over the fish, and uh, he 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 would take his oar and point where, where the fish were. Okay. He, he would take the oar, and and so the people in the purse boat could would, would know. All he had to do was just point his oar where, where where the fish were, and when, when the uh, the the fish is you you can tell which way the fish are going, but when they flip, you can tell which way they're going. Uh -huh. And and you try to get ahead of them, but and and uh, you you get the purse boats around where they'd be between you, and and then when they got just right, you you just wave and, and they'd come they'd come take you in. Uh, that that was primitive. That was primitive. That wasn't spotter, plane spotter. <laughs> no. no. And the person in the striker boat 
road, right? Yeah, road. And standing st- up. Standing up. How'd you do that? Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't, you, you, just, you just did it because you, you, you were not racing. You were just, just rowing, you know. You, you, you take your time. Well, some was faster than others, uh-huh. of course. But, uh, but it, it was fun. Did you have any kind of job with the net itself once the set was made? Uh, well, the striker boatman's job uh, was to go out on the fish and then it helped look for fish in the crow's nest. He, he, he was a, the striker boatman and the captain look, look, mostly looked for, okay. for the fish. And that, that was one of his jobs. But once the boats made that set... Did the striker boatman then just go back? Or no, you... when, when, the, when, the, when they came and set, mm-hmm. the striker boatman would go right to the back of the net and, 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 and tie and pull the corks in the striker boat. They had ties where you could, you could tie them up. What, what, that, oh, what that did was, was make a, a pocket, you might say, when you pull that cork line up, it, it made, a, made a pocket but more for the fish to go in. in the... So that was an important job, too. Yeah, it was, it was an important job. Yeah. And so you were on the opposite end of the set than the two purse boats? Well, the, when, that, when they said you were out John, on that little boat on the back end of the net, see, and uh, of course they, they, pull it, they pull it right on in, and, and you're, you're right there. When you get, get up close, you, you would untie... You would untie some and let, let the net go out a little bit at the time. Okay. From, from, from the striker boat. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I enjoyed it. Can you tell me the story that you were telling the other day about when you were fishing off? It was near the time that the Charlie Mason went down? The same day. Yeah, will you that tell was, that? That was my first day. It was January the 1st, 1948. Mm-hmm. It, it was the, the 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 fishing the fishing we cut out before Christmas, and uh, uh, well maybe a week or less before Christmas, and then after Christmas that that would be the fall fishing. Well, some of the, if it was warm, the weather was right, there'd still be fish here. So uh, after Christmas, they they start back. And fished in as long as they could, as long as the fish was here, and and the the weather would the the weather would let them. Mm-hmm. And I remember, it, it, back yonder years ago, they they fished right on until February, and the, they they go down to Ocracoke and Hatters. Well, well then the boats were small enough that they could go out of Ocracoke Inlet. That they didn't have to depend on going around the shoal, so they they could go through Pamlico Sound and out of Wallace Channel, mm-hmm. out of Ocracoke Inlet, and they they fished right on, uh, right on uh, as long as they could, and and uh, as I said one year, they, they were fishing in February, mm-hmm. and they were catching a lot of fish. Hmm. Of course, uh, from year to year that changes. Some year it, it wipes it out right quick the weather. And, other years, it just it'll just linger on. Right. So, what boat were you on that day? Uh, Mississippi. Okay. Fire, Firely Stone. Firely Stone was captain. That was my first day. I was twenty four years old, <laughs> just a youngin to most of those men on there. But uh, I I had been uh, I had been uh, fishing here in the sign on, on the striker boat, and. Uh, and so that that's how I got the job. I, I had I had that experience. That's how I got the job. And the first the first day on January the first, we went out of Ocracoke Inlet. We went through Wallace Channel, went out of Ocracoke Inlet. And we headed north towards Hatters, towards the bite. And I don't know for some reason there were there were only two boats. There, there were us and Roy Goodman was on the Ferndina, mm-hmm. and he, he fished up in New Jersey out of Egg Harbor, out north of uh, Atlantic City, and the boat she wasn't carrying probably over four hundred thousand, but uh, he had to have, have a small boat to get in and out the inlets up there. 
But we we were we were going, we we were going along, and uh, the, the, it was calm, and the sea was almost flat, and we were standing. Several of us were standing up on the bow of the boat, and we heard fish flipping, and uh, so finally stopped the boat, and uh, and I got off on the striker boat, and and, and went out there looking, and I could hear them. It was early enough, you couldn't see too good, but I could hear them. And when I got right in them, I could see them flip too. And, but not only that, I saw the bubbles arising. Well, back, back in the 40s, uh, they fished through the Cape in the fall of the year, and that's the way they'd find the fish, but was by bubbles. Really? But when bubbles arise, you go and see solid bu bubbles arising everywhere <laughs> around you. And they, they sit and caught a lot of fish like that. They throw up, uh, uh, when, when, they, when they, if they were running along on the boat, people was looking over the side. And they see those bubbles come up and they throw something overboard to, to, to mark that place. And then, uh, I wasn't on the striker boat then, but the, the, uh, the striker boat would get out there and he'd get look at the best place he could find. Right. And but so so that's the way that was. Well I knew I knew that those fish out because those bubbles were coming. And so they got off in the purse boat. And of course I probably hollered and told them that, that those fish there. And they got off in the purse boat. And and when they got right there I, I set them. They they took me in. And I went to the back of the net, tied it, started tying the the corks up on 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 the striker boat, and not a sign of a fish. Well, Roy Goodman didn't see it there. That they, they uh, for some reason they they didn't see it, and uh, they they started the person that they started the person that net, and not a sign of fish. And them old fellas, I could hear them a grumbling in there. Now I'm just a 24 year old, a young, one, and and here he has gone over here and set us on a bull. The first thing, <laughs> see Is that, that what they call it? <laughs> when you didn't get no fish, it was a bull. And uh, so they kept right on in the directly. They broke on her. It was those Rochette. The last one, I reckon, probably the last one was caught that year, and. Uh, and we caught about 175,000. What do you mean they broke? Well, well, they they just you you sitting and you and you don't see any sign of a fish, and all at once, all at once, here here they come. Uh huh. Uh, the the, the whole the whole net shaking, the water everywhere, and and uh, that's called bro they broke on her, and uh, we had about 175,000. That's it. I know that felt good. Uh, well, it, it it kept me out of trouble, <laughs> and uh, so uh, there wasn't any boats around us. So we headed back towards Okakoke Inlet. Well, it was getting up close to the middle of the day when we got up there, and the fleet, the the, the I don't know how many boats there were there, eight or ten or twelve boats. I remember the Whiters was one of them. And uh, uh, J.B. Weeks, I believe, as I as I remember, was there. And but they they you could see solid black beds of them. And but they were those hard workers. And they'd go sit, and it, it would take two crews after they got them pursed up, and and boat come alongside. It would take two crews to raise them up where they could bail them. See. Uh, you did everything by hand then. Nowadays, they just they, they put those whips from the mast and, and pull her right on up. Right. Well, well, they, but, the fish were the hard workers. The fish were the hard workers. They just made it hard for and, and, you. And, and when you and when you get in uh, 30, 40, 50 feet of water, the deeper it is, yeah. uh, the the more room that, that they got to go. And anyway. We went. I believe. I believe we went alongside of a JP, uh, the Whiters, and helped them get their fish, helped them get their set. And then we went and set. 
And same thing, we had we we, we couldn't have and, and for some reason Wiley Lewis on the uh what's her name? It, it went ashore. Part Oh the um Charlie Mason. Char the Charlie Mason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have senior moments, you know. That's okay. But, but uh they came and, and helped us get uh get our net up and we had we deck loaded her right there. Huh. Had to put the boards up and deck loaded her. And uh I don't know if he got any fish. I don't think there was any fish in that boat when she went ashore. But they they uh that they they went to uh, now it was a bluebird day, you know what a bluebird day is? Not a cloud in the sky, mm -hmm. just as pretty shirt sleeve weather mm -hmm. in 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 January, and uh, uh, that they they helped us, and then did they, 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 they go sit? I think maybe they they went and sit. And uh, and when it, something happened to the to the purse boats when they were hoisting them, and the the net went overboard and got around the wheel propeller, and that, that's the see they did they didn't have any power. Just like the Parkins. Just, yeah, same thing. That was a bad problem then, wasn't it? Well, uh, well, now it was a bluebird day when we went down in the middle of the mm -hmm. day. It was a bluebird day, just a light air of blowing. And no swell either then, and but it started to rain. And about about the time we we we, we got ready and went in the inlet and started through Wallace's Channel, and it started to sprinkle a little bit. Those clouds, because the weather moves fast that time of year mm -hmm. in the winter time, and uh, it, it, you start off with a pretty morning, and before night comes, you're in a storm with those low pressures. Are coming, and uh, if we we went in Okako Inlet, well, evidently all the rest of them did too. That they, they, they could go in there, and so we, we went in the Okako Inlet and Wallace Channel, and right on right on here, right on up for Martha River, uh, for Adams Creek, and it, it it started sprinkling and it was foggy, and Anyway, we we made it right on up to Adams Creek, and when we got when we got up in Adams Creek, between the head of Adams Creek and and the uh, uh, steel bridge, it was a bridge, it was steel bridge the end they called it. That the squall, a squall come out of the southern, a thundered and lightning. The, I mean, it was one of them times. It was rattle the windows. We had to stop. We had to stop right in there in, until that until that went by. Well, if we'd been in the ocean, it would have been too bad. See, mm -hmm. so, uh, uh, but but nobody knew about the weather that was coming in. Mm. Now now it, it, before it comes, it's it's a hurricane until it gets to you, and then it dies right down like this storm did in the Gulf this week. They they overrated or something. Yeah. Well, I guess they had to. Right. But anyway, we had 552,000 huh. in, in that. And in the meantime, the Charlie Mason ran aground off Ocracoke Beach. And, and she went on the beach. Mm -hmm. She she washed up on the beach. And the 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 I believe that it was the striker boat when something happened and he fell in the fish hole. I don't know what it was. And and he he was killed mm -hmm. that night. But but she washed up on the beach. Hmm. And that, that that was December the first, nineteen forty eight. Oh my goodness! So the crews that you were working on, Mr. Milton, were they um, black and white? Fishermen? Well, mostly black. Mostly black. Most, mostly black. Yeah. So you were were you right in there singing those work songs with them? Well, I was I was with them. <laughs> I was with them. I did, I I didn't do much singing, but yeah. Uh, but uh, right, right out with them, yeah. Oh, and that's something. Yeah, and I, uh, all, all those, all the crew slept down in the Four Peak, all of them together, and uh, I can, I, rem I can remember right now when you, when you walk about around the the opening where you go down in the, in the cruise quarters down there, 
that, that odor that they, they would come out of there. Yeah. Uh, you know, no, no baths and, and fishy and everything else. Uh, so uh, it's, it's, been a, it's been a good time. And well, in, in 48, Dad and myself went to Lewis, Delaware with Berkeley Sampson mm-hmm. on, on, on the Sampson Brothers. And I was striker boat up by then. That was just before the spiders started. And uh, the, my, one, my job, one of them was to look for fish in the crow's nest. So I rode up and down the, the Jersey, the Delaware and Jersey coast in that crow's nest. <laughs> uh, we were with Ber- Berkeley Sampson. And uh, then the, there was... Uh, the, the beaches were just as bare as they were here then. There was no houses on the beach or nothing like that. Now they're wall to wall. Yeah. And, uh, and well, we didn't, we didn't finish, Dad and I didn't finish the season out. We, we didn't do too good. That, that, that was one of those off years. And, uh, and we came home and went shrimping. We came home in August and went shrimping. And that... That was the end of my fat backing until '98. Uh, fifty years, fifty years, mm-hmm. and I can remember now that those those people fat backing. Then I loved to do it the best of anything in the world. But if you did it, you had to leave home. You had you had to go to the, the Gulf. Uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, the fish, or it was just getting started down there then, or or go to Delaware and mm-hmm. in, in, in those kind of places. So I didn't go anymore until '98. I started running the boat for James, mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, that that was a different that that was a different thing with James's outfit. They had power blocks. They had power blocks yeah. of the person that didn't use no didn't use no striker boat. Mm. You know? Well, when they started with the spotter pilots, is that what um, killed the striker boat position? Oh yeah, that yeah that that took uh, that, there was no need for the because then they started to, they started to put enough corks on the net, so they increased the corks and they increased the weight on the lead line and. Uh, that that eliminated the, the striker boat because the spotter plane went out and found the fish and, and set them. And, and they had radios. They had radios. They talked back and forth. And, and uh, uh, when, when we were f- fishing with James, he, he had planes spotted, mm-hmm. plane, spotter planes. And, and, uh, and we, we, they, he'd go up in the morning and, and, and find the he see if we were going to Harker's Island before we ever got there. He 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 didn't look it over. He see the fish, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and and uh, and that that there was no need for the striker boat then. Okay. But right after, uh, right after, uh, I when, when I got out of it. Jesse Taylor. Have you heard? You've heard of Jesse Taylor. Mm-hmm. Well, he was a young young fellow. He married a girl from Davis here, and uh, he he was a spot uh, spotter plane, and that's what he did. And he uh, uh, one of those uh, uh, Navy planes from Cherry Point ran in him uh, right now to the westward of that uh, the moorhead to the port mm-hmm. where that big storage place is. Right over there in that marsh, that that's uh, the, the the that plane ran in him and, and killed him right there. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What year was that about? Uh, it was uh, mu- it must have been in the late fifties, mm-hmm. because uh, the morning that that happened, well, I I I went to uh, uh, McClellanville shrimping in fifty four for the first time. And so it, it was probably uh, before '60, I believe it was mm-hmm. that, uh, that that they started the spider plane. 
and Gosh, that, was... that that changed that changed the whole thing. Yeah. But, but there, there's a big gap in there from '48 to, to '98, and I I know that the, they face right on in the fall of the year. Those those boats from north and from south would come to Beaufort, and and, and they would fish. And there was years that those big fish ran so far offshore that they couldn't see land. Mm-hmm. When, when they were fishing, they were so far offshore that they couldn't see land mm-hmm. way off there in, in that deep water. I got and, that. And then you, would you just describe briefly what the ring setter did? The ring setter? Mm-hmm. Well, the, the, the rings was on the bottom line, bottom of the net. And that's that. The rings is what the purse line went through those rings. You know how you know how a, a tobacco sack. You, you pull it and close it up. Yep. Yeah. Well, the the rings was on the bottom of the net, and the purse line went through those rings. And so when they set and they come together, and and uh, and the mate the the people out of the mate boat. Some of them would bring that purse line over to to the captain boat, and they'd put it in the tom weight block, and drop it overboard. And when they did that, that that seal that went to the bottom. Oh, the tom weight block. The, to, the tom weight mm-hmm. block. See, the tom weight had a block, two blocks on it, and and uh, there, there was a there was a crane on the side of the purse boat that 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 the the, the uh, the Tom Waite went overboard and with the, with the purse line in those blocks. And then they take that line up through those blocks to the crane and, and back to the, uh, to the, to the winch that, 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 pulled, the, okay. that pulled the line in. Uh-huh. So the, that, that, the, uh, the ring setter was, was, a, was a man that, that cleared the, when he went overboard. He'd be sure. And that they had the, they had long rods uh, on the on the, uh, uh, the the rings were, were on the front end of the of the pile of net, mm-hmm. and, and they, they they had rods there, and those rings those rings went on that rod, and they they as you as you'd go out, they, whenever you come to a ring, it it would go over, overboard. Okay. And, and see. Yeah. And, but that but that purse line was, was in that. Was in those rings, okay. and then it just it just pulled the bottom of the net, mm-hmm. just closed it up, just like a sack. Amazing. Yeah. 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 And then another thing you did on the on the Manhattan boat was cook. Well, that that was here in the sign. Uh-huh. Uh huh. When I when uh, Buddy and I was thirteen years old, we started shrimping with Mister Amy Amy Willis, and Buddy was going to be cook. And the first morning, he didn't do a very good job of it, the cooking. So I, I fell out to the, to the cook's job. So I, I cooked, had, had a little two-burner gas stove, and that, that, that was fire now. And uh, mostly fried stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, and uh, when, when we went fat back in, uh, of course, everybody in the early days, everybody would take their lunch with them, you know. But uh, when they got to be, there was 12, 14 men in the crew, and they, they, they would buy the groceries, and somebody would cook. And for a short while, I mean, I was cooked. In, in, uh, uh, it was different than what it was when those big bugs. Mm-hmm. In the, it, yeah. it was very primitive. <laughs> but those men ate well on a Menhaden boat, didn't they? Oh, they had anything. Them, them boats to Beaufort, I can see them right now. You go down there and they had that long table, I don't know, 15 feet long or more. They said anything that you would want to eat there. And, and of course, they paid for it. In the galley. In, in the galley, yeah. they had they had they had that table right in the galley, and the cook the cook would, would cook it and, and and set it on the table, 
and all sweets and anything like that. They had anything you wanted to eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. Well, that was some good business for the grocery stores uh, and the I'm fuel docks. You, yeah, and yeah, yeah. That was pretty significant, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. 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 Gosh. Well, what do you think about today, Mr. Milton? Now there's no fish factories and. There's no fish factory. Yeah. And fish are getting scarcer all the time. Mm hmm In 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 ninety seven ninety seven pass, I caught ten thousand pounds one set right there to Breakwater Buoy and two hours before I caught those fish. I went by there two hours before that and there wasn't a fish there. What kind of fish was that? It was croakers, but mostly croakers. Yeah. That that was fish that had been offshore wintering offshore in that deep water in those mm -hmm. rocks. Mm -hmm. And when that time came in the spring of the year, they'd come in. They call it they call them fish runs back years ago, like the spots when they run in the fall. Mm -hmm. They all come at one time, and and uh, and. I had been I had been the day before and it and it take too long to, to tell you this, I reckon. But you you want me to start? Sure, tell me anyway. Well, the day the day before I caught those fish, it was a, well, fish it was a, in the spring of the year. And when when fish after Christmas sink net into the Cape, uh when the water the temperature of the water started going down it seemed like about 55 degrees was the ideal temperature to catch fish around the Cape. Mm -hmm. And it would go right on down. And when it got down about 50, they'd move offshore. That water got colder, and they'd move offshore. And the colder that water got, the farther they'd go offshore. Mm -hmm. And the, they got the fishing out there in, in 100 feet of water off on the southwest of the Knuckle. I the wet side of the, of the shad boat that sunk out there, mm -hmm. and and uh, you, uh, like I say, in the spring of the year, they they would start to come to shore. So I, I was I was sinking it, and I went I went out there the morning before I caught the fish. I like I like to vision things like this. I, I went out, there must have been 75 boats out there sink netting at that time. That, that was when there was a lot of sink netting. And I went by the breakwater buoy and headed off yonder to the West Slough buoy. And went almost to the West Slough buoy. And I was watching all the time, all those fellas running. Nobody fishing. Nobody fishing. And I went to the West Slough buoy. And I headed to the western and went out you know, just in shore of the English trawler. I looking, I looking as we go. Well, that morning, that morning, about 10 o'clock, was high water on the beach. Mm -hmm. And there was, uh, people think you catch fish all the time. Well, there's times you go out there and you can't see a fish in the world. And, and the, those people, were, were still running around everywhere. Uh, somebody would, would, would mark a little place and try the in and didn't catch anything. And he, he'd keep right on running. We, we ran right on from the English trawler and he'd right on in yard to the wood, to the shackle for the banks toward the woods. And, uh, and, and I was looking all the time, watching the clock. I was looking all the time. And just about that time, uh, we we were inshore then, and I looked off yonder towards the trawler, and there was two boats. I saw two boats running around, and they stopped. They they tried to end, and they stopped. I knew what they were doing, and and these two tried to end, and then they said, "In thirty minutes, in thirty minutes, every boat in that ocean was a fishing." Those fish, those fish appear at, at that time, and we caught some the first day, 
And uh, I don't remember now how many we had the first day. Was it all croaker? Uh, mostly croakers. Were you saying they tried the end? Well, what they do, the, they run a, a little piece of the net out uh -huh. in the water and let it go to the bottom. And if there's any fish there, when they pull it up, they'll have some fish. Okay. If there's no fish, they don't have any. See, they call it trying the end of the net. And, uh, but the next morning, uh, I was a little late getting there because the time, that time was later for, for the tide to change. Mm -hmm. But when I went, they were fishing just offshore the breakwater. But from breakwater point to the breakwater buoy, there wasn't a, 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 a scale of nothing showing on that fathom meter. And I went offshore. I never did like to get right in the fleet. Mm -hmm. I went offshore and marked the place and set a 200, about 200 yards of net. I had a little ran, and I, I punched it in when I, when I dropped it. I punched it in. And uh, I, I turned around and looked, and here come a fog bank. Out, out of the night. So uh, I ran right back and picked up, I had that Loran, I could tell right mm -hmm. where it was, and, picked, and pulled that net up in. It didn't take very long. I pulled that net up in and I started right back in towards that breakwater buoy. And I got in shore, that breakwater buoy, and the, they were 20 feet deep. Those fish were, they were come, those fish were moving in. <laughs> See, they do it every year. The, those fish were, were moving in. Mm -hmm. and, and that length of time, when they get ready to come, they, they come. And, and, the, and so it was, it was just as foggy as it could be. And I, I had, the, I had the, the, the breakwater buoy in, in Bay Point in the, in the Lower End. So I'm in a tenth of a mile from that breakwater buoy and sit and sit my net and come back and sit that net. We had a hundred boxes of fish. There was boats out there because I, I was just a, a little too. There was boats out there. I caught 150 boxes that day. Mm -hmm. see? And and uh, we, 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 we had so many fish that, uh, well, we had, I had a boat. Load. I got pictures of it. I got, 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 Roy Davis took pictures of the boat to the dock up by the James's. Oh my gosh. And with the fish, with the fish in the net. Mm -hmm. And, but those fish were moving in. Now, there was another year that, uh, I was, I was on the Ruby Marie. That was before I got to Roy and Mary. And those fish come in there, and that was in the spring of the year. Mm -hmm. We had 78 boxes, one said. Wow. And, and uh, but but when those fish move in at that time, and you you be out there fishing on on ebb tide, and you, nobody could mark a fish, and just about the time for the tide to change, you see a mud royal break up. Hmm. You know what a mud royal is? The rolling mud. Well, it's thick water. Mm -hmm. It's thick, thick water would 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 make, would, would make right up, but they, they they had to be ready before you could catch them. And when they did that, then you could go sit down in and catch a boatload of fish. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that was croaker? Croaker. Do they still come in like that? No. What happened? They changed their patterns? They, they were, they were uh, uh, managed to death. Mm -hmm. They were managed to death. Well, in 97 is when the uh, Fishers Reform Bill. That that was the year I caught those fish. That that was the year we went to Raleigh. Yeah. That was the year we went to Raleigh, and and the, the fisheries took complete charge, and it's going down every year since. But I remember um, maybe um, gosh, Mr. Fulcher out there at Ocracoke at the fish house. Mm hmm. He said one time that he thought. The hurricanes had maybe changed the inlets, the direction of the inlets, and so maybe they weren't coming in the sloughs or something, or something had shifted. Well, the pattern is, like I told you, in the fall of the year, 
when that water gets cold, mm -hmm. starts getting cold. Well, the fish know. The fish know. They can sense it. Okay. They've got sensors. Yeah. And, and, and the, the, when the water temperature drops, they, they just move off. The, the water's warmer offshore, mm -hmm. and they, they follow it right on off, right. And, and go right on off there in those rocks in their wintering grounds, and and uh, and as I said, the the latter part of the the uh, uh, sink netting, they go off there in a hundred feet of water. Mm -hmm. and we we went off there one day. We were right to the edge of the rock, mm -hmm. and you 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 mark you mark a little you mark a little place, and. And you see it, and and, and and if you missed them, you didn't get nothing. Right. If you if you got in them, you catch a net full. Right. It's a solid net full. Okay. Well, we got a little bit off from the Menhaden. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add about about your experience in the Menhaden industry? Well, the the la the last of the fishing, uh, we got we got to go in with James, with James, with fishing inside in the summer. And then we'd go in the ocean in the fall. Mm -hmm. And I remember one year, uh, we, 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 we went out uh, to the Cape and crossed the shoals, and there was, there was uh, some of those uh, Virginia boats. And Bobbo and, and Al Good uh, Dudley, Dudley mm -hmm. was out there that day. And uh, the airplanes couldn't see a fish. But you see, you see the little mud royals mm -hmm. are breaking up, and some of them would sit and they wouldn't catch a fish. Mm -hmm. And and I, I remember that that day, uh, Bobo sat and missed them. Is that your watch? Yep. He does that. Is it time to do something? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. All right. Sorry. Uh, and we went we went off there. To the to the eastern of the of the uh, knuckle between the knuckle and that uh, uh, northeast buoy, mm -hmm. we didn't go that far off, I don't think. But uh, that's that's the way the fish were doing. That they, they were now that year the the net the first thing was on Kenny's boat, and he just had the had had a, a little boat to to pull the net off when you, when you would start. And uh, well, I, I marked the place for the fountain meter, and uh, but Kenny didn't see it right on it. He he didn't see it. He didn't see anything, and he didn't see it. But uh, Bobo made a set, and he didn't get anything. And Al Dudley made a set, and I think it was eleven hundred five. He caught one. He caught that set. Mm -hmm. See, when you, when you get them, you catch a solid net full. Yeah. And and the airplanes couldn't see them. Mm -hmm. The airplanes couldn't see them. There's a many a raft of fish going down that coast that nobody didn't see. They didn't know. See? Yeah. And then they'll do it, they'll do it right on. Mm -hmm. And you you would think that after a while they'd catch them all up. They've had one of the best seas in Mississippi this year that they've ever had. Uh, they, David will tell you about that when, when you talk to him. Okay. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, he gave me something else. Yeah. All right, Mr. Milton, well, thank you. Is there anything else? Well, uh, when, you, when you get to it, when you get to it, I've just been talking to Milton this morning. This book here. Well, let's uh, turn this off and turn it back on. All right.